so happy that all of you did so well on your final practical, but I need everybody to have like almost a moment of silence. This is the last time we're gonna be able to have a food celebration. Aww. Yeah, it's almost because the school says that I am helping to contribute to poor choices, poor lifestyle choices that you guys are making. What choices do you think I helped you contribute to that were poor? Trying to be poor in a hot dog, eating uh, key lime pie. Yeah. <laughs> it's made with condensed milk. Pumpkin bars, made with condensed milk. Chocolate chip cookies, cup of butter. Dulce de leche. Dulce de leche. So everything that we ate could be seen as a poor lifestyle choice. The juice wasn't too bad, but I still think it might have had too much sugar. <laughs> All right, today we've got to look at, are the schools making students fat? So we need to find out who is to blame. It's, it's terrible, but we always need to find out who we're going to blame. There we go. All right, students, you guys, can you believe that your parents were not weighing as much as you were? Right now, we see that students are weighing more than their parents did. There's a lot of reasons for that. A few of the reasons that we know of are students don't exercise as much. Simply, our lifestyles are different. Maybe we're not as safe as we feel like we used to be out in the streets. And you're not really going outside to play. Those video games are a big draw. Facebook, big draw. So you're not going out and playing. The other thing is because the schools, our school, doesn't have as much money as it used to, a lot of the electives that we used to take that we would run around and do stuff like aerobics or yoga or weight training, some of those things are even team sports, like taking tennis for a period or taking football training for a period. They're not offered anymore because schools don't have the money to hire those teachers and they have to make sure that they are providing the things like reading and writing and math, all science, the things that are tested on FCAP. So because of that, we don't have the money in the system to pay for that. So kids are not getting that much exercise at school. In addition to all of all the things that we had to talk about, and we talk about students being overweight, obese doesn't mean that you're carrying around five or 10 pounds more. Obese means that you are over 30% your body weight, what you at your ideal weight. It's a lot of weight. And when you have that much weight on your frame, ideas that we never thought would ever apply to students are starting to. We're seeing diabetes. We're seeing high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Things that we would have never thought that would have happened to kids. And because of those things, we now say someone's got to do something. See the little elephant? Say, this was me and this was my mom. <laughs> the wellness policy was the answer for the state and for the district for us to make life better for you guys. The wellness policy says two things. The first thing is we've got to provide nutritious food on campus during school hours. That means if you are in a school during school hours, there has to be a limitation on the amount of calories that you're getting and the amount of fat that you're getting in a food. So the nutrition has to be controlled. The second thing that they said was that PE must occur every year for every student until eighth grade. After eighth grade, you guys, once you're in high school, from ninth to 12th grade, you must take one credit of PE. So that means in the four years, you have to take one credit. The problem with that is you guys can take PE online. And I know how you take PE online. Okay, do 20 jumping jacks. 
Take your pulse. Yep, you did well. You're not doing any of the exercise. When they're telling you to go take five laps, you went down to get some Snickers and came back upstairs. And that was the whole exercise. Okay? All right, this is where we start to have a problem. I think everybody wants students to eat well. I want you guys to eat well. I want you to be healthy, and I want you to be happy. But I want to be able to have a nice yearbook. And I really want to be able to do great things with TV production. Our announcements, our commercials, all of the things that we do, we work really hard. And all of the equipment that we use costs a lot of money. And the only way that we can pay for all of that and not make each student pay for it is fundraising. And I know when I bring in donuts, I make a lot of money off you guys. Because you like donuts. Krispy Kreme is right down the street. We have a Krispy Kreme right down the street from our school. And so when that happens, I make lots of money. And that helps to pay for the field trips and all of the things that need it. Because of the wellness program, we cannot sell candy. We cannot sell baked goods. We can't sell anything that you guys really want to buy. And so our programs aren't getting any money. Drama can't go to districts. Dance can't have the show. Skills is going to have a hard time traveling. The band trip across the country may not happen. All of those things require money, and we got a lot of money from fundraising. And the last thing is, just like our celebration today, we can't have them anymore because I'm contributing to you making poor choices. And because I'm standing in as your teacher, and I'm saying it's okay for you to eat all of this stuff, I'm basically condoning poor choices for your diet. Are we enjoying all of this? Okay, it's question time. I need to know if you guys are paying attention. I know this went fast, but you know I know how smart you are and you just have baked goods, so I know you're on, okay? What are the two policies that a, that now a school has got to do? What's the, that a school's responsibility to do? And what's the second thing? It has to be two things. Who can remember the second one? PE. PE. We've got to provide PE. At least one credit in the four years. Okay, explain why the student population has an obesity issue. Why are kids fatter? They're not exercising. They're not exercising. Any other reason? Maybe the snacks that we're providing are contributing to someone being heavy. Anything else? They're spending less time outside. They're, play they're not spending as much time playing outside. Excellent. How might the new policy affect what you eat at lunch? Take away your choices. You don't have a choice. Anything else? What are you having for lunch? You might have to bring from home. Okay. If you want to have your Snickers and your Pringles, absolutely. <laughs> and if you're eating at school, what might you choose? A turkey wrap. A turkey wrap. Why would a turkey wrap be a good possibility? It's healthy. Does it have a lot of fat? No. Does it have a lot of calories? And it does provide what you said with protein. Excellent. Good job. All right. Create a plan for following the wellness policy, but still allows the students to have a freedom to choose what they want to eat. What could we do in the cafeteria or on campus that still gives you guys a choice, but allows us to stay in the wellness program? Does anybody have any ideas? Maybe do like a portion side. They don't have so much of one thing, kind of balance it out. For okay, so we could do portion control. So maybe even if we do get, you know, a key lime, you know, a piece of key lime pie, it's a very small piece. It's a portion control piece. Anything else? Do we still have salad bars at school? A salad bar would be would be a great idea, and no, we don't. A salad bar. Some schools do. Some schools do. Um, a salad bar would be a great idea. And that way, students get lots of different choices 
of maybe a lot of different healthy foods so they can create something that they want to eat. I think that's an awesome idea. Well done. Okay, guys. I know that you love your donuts. And I know that you want to look really great to go out on Saturday night. So sometimes those two things don't work. Okay? So you need to discuss. And I need you to talk about one final thing. Should I, as a member of the public <coughs> school system, be able to regulate your caloric and fat intake? That means your dietary choices. Can I regulate your dietary choices in your life? Should I, should I have that power? Should I regulate what you eat? Okay, I need you to discuss. I need to hear what you have to say. In a way, I do believe they should do it, but uh, not completely. Anybody else? I know that all of you know. I need you to discuss. You need to talk. Well, I mean, I think although the fundraising thing is an issue, and I think there should be ways to work around it and work with it, but I think overall the wellness plan kind of is necessary because obesity is a big problem, and there's especially the kids who get free lunch. Like some kids don't really eat out of school, like eating in schools where they need to eat, and they don't have enough money to buy good food. I know she's not the only one that has a voice. I need to hear you. I, I like the fact that they want students to be healthier, but I believe in choices, like um, someone had mentioned before, um, you can have like a little buffet, but then have several choices, like several different foods, like apples, cherries, banana, um, grapefruit, and then they're able to choose what they want, but it's still going to be something healthy and everyone wins. Just talk. Just talk. I don't think school is really the problem. It's more like Tumblr, Facebook, or video games. Yeah, school should be the ones dictating our poor choices and everything. I think that, you know, if a kid becomes obese, he has the control over it. I mean, of course, there's special cases. He has the control over that to end it or continue on it. And what about parents? Do parents have any say in what happens? Like it's difficult, I believe, like for toddlers and elementary school, it's easier for the school and the parent. But once you're in middle school, high school, it's really difficult to kind of regulate what they're eating because at the end of the day, you give um, your child money, your teenage you know, daughter money, and she's going to get whatever she wants, whether it's in school or out of school. Yeah, I mean, the school can do that, so they're not held responsible, but at the end of the day, you're not really regulating their dietary plan. You're just, you know, restricting the time when they do it because afterwards, they're just going to go and eat whatever they want. But even with, even with the wellness policy, as much as you put regulations on it, at the end of the day, the school is not going to be held responsible for whether a kid is obese or has diabetes or not. Yeah, they put it out there. It's up to you. But I bet you this once you get older, that's up to you. This is the choice. If you want to continue eating what you want, then you do it, I guess. Out of school, they don't want to be responsible. You're, you can eat whatever you want, but during school time, they don't want to yeah, I would like to see how much of the obesity rate is going to change just because the school changes the policy. I mean, everything that happens out of school, who controls that? Nobody. I think it still helps. It helps, yeah, it helps to a certain extent. Yeah, like you can't control a child's calorie intake. Like everyone has a different body type, and that's something that the school can't control. You could, you only have so much control over like a child's weight. You know, so like everyone's saying, they could eat like five Big Macs every day or something. Like you can't control because it it's outside. So it's only to a certain extent. Thank you can help a child. But so they're, they're not trying, trying, they're not they're trying to no. control their no, whole no. eating habit. They can't. Like obviously their school ca cafeteria isn't located in their home or whatever. But mm -hmm. if you're at school, their options. If they're not going to eat at school, so be it. But if they're if they'd rather not starve themselves, their options are those options, and they have to eat it. So they have no other choice. I and think you don't also like schools are school. here to show an example for students. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And if you're promoting bad health in school, which is like donuts, and I remember in my high school we had pastelitos, and it was meant to support the football team, whatever. So as a school environment, we're there to support children to better their lives. And if we're promoting all this bad health, it's just because they're just going to take it on and go home and eat unhealthy. But if they eat an apple at school, 
it, it sets like an example for them and they keep eating healthy and healthy. Yeah, and, like, and not only that, like people, the, you can eat an apple and you can eat a bag of chips. The apple will hold you over twice, three times as long as a bag of chips. I think instead of forcing the students to make certain decisions, we should educate them to have them make the decisions on their own and not just they're making it because they have no other options. Because if at home the mom is making pasta and giving them pizza every night, it's really not going to help if school is, you know, making them eat. Okay, um, one of you said something that was very interesting. You said that the schools would not be penalized if the child was obese. Actually, by the wellness plan, we can't. Because there is a rule and a regulation as deemed by state, it makes it law. So we can be held legally responsible for a child's weight. So how does that work? But, but how many kids? How many, how many, how many, how many like, you won't have to sit a parent-teacher conference in order to tell the parent, hey, your son is obese, you need to watch your weight. Like, then for sure you're getting sued. No, 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 no. Well, you no, can. The school is meeting the, the plan. I mean, whatever happens with the child, it's not your fault anymore. I mean, how many cases has that happened? Is that why the wellness policy was even put into place? There's a lot. But it comes back. Well, the, 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 the ideal thing would be to educate them, like they said, and maybe the school can still have those choices. Maybe, like, instead of every day, maybe just once a week or something like that. Or so just like, taking off all the vending machines with all the junk food. Because I remember when I was in high school, they took off the vending machines with so chocolate good. milk. So Which I thought first, chocolate milk I don't think was that bad, but they took off that and I was like, oh great. And then they started taking off all like, like so the star, what about, Starburst, what about, the Skittles. What about better bad choices? Like there, there's some baked goods and stuff like that that are made with healthier ingredients or more natural. They don't have like hydrogenated oils and stuff like that, which, which are horrible. And they're still, putting and they're still good. Like Jello, it's sweet and it's healthy at the same time. Like who doesn't like Jello? <laughs> There's always room for jello. Let's go over yeah. better about bad choices. Okay, I liked all the things that you guys had to say, and I think that you did a really good job. And we can pretty much see by our discussion that it's not an easy decision to make. It's not easy to say who should regulate, and very few of you talked about the right of a student to have choice. And that's another thing that we will address at a different time, but in our American history class, we are very concerned about people or citizens' rights. And even if you are 16 or 15 or 17, you still have certain rights. And does the state or the district have the right to take away choice from you? And that's another thing that we'll have to discuss at another date. All right, guys, today we talked about a lot of different things. Um, who can re who can recap really recap huh recap <laughs> <laughs> who can recap some of the things that we talked about today? That's your choice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nutrition. The wellness program. And is obesity a problem? Yes. What happens as a result of students being obese? Diabetes. Diabetes. High cholesterol. High cholesterol. And how does this affect schools? We're still missing that part. <laughs> Anything else that you can think of that it affects? Okay, well done. And that's it for today. <laughs>